If you watch this show, you know uh, my green thumb leaves a lot to be desired. So maybe it's a good thing I've been relegated to my home studio to isolate for COVID because today is our City Line gardening special. North, south, east, west. Did you know the direction your garden faces matters? Frank Ferragini is here to do all the work for us and tell us exactly what to plant where? Because the reality is, Frankie, you can't pick what you want to grow in your yard until you know what direction it faces, right? You got it, because it's always about the right plant for the right place. And often what people do is they go to the garden center and they're like, oh, those clematis are so beautiful. Oh, that begonia, I love that yellow that's there. Oh, the blue on this plant. Oh, it's just pretty. I got to have that one. Oh, this over here, the bee's knees. Oh, that's, a, I got to have that. That's the new plant of the year. And the mandevilla, I got to have it. And of course, I need a tomato but they're really not thinking about the property at all. They're just buying with their eyes. And that's like the wrong thing to do. I buy with my eyeballs too, and it's the wrong thing to do. First of all, what direction does your garden face? And, and then talk to us a little bit about what plants are best for if you're facing the sun. Okay, so this is an amazing tool. It's called the phone. But what you don't know is on your phone, <laughs> uh, on many of your devices, there's actually a compass. And what's great about the compass is we could actually go outside <laughs> and just point that compass and we're seeing southeast. So my home is facing southeast. And if we just move this compass a little bit, we'll see that the so direct south is that way. We're gonna also see that west is this way. So it's something that's important is that we do know that the sun rises in the east, so that's morning sun. It's going to set in the west. So seeing that I face southeast, this area, my backyard, gets a whole lot of light. So first off, what way does your house face? If you're facing south or west, lots of sun. If you're facing north or east, you're really only getting morning sun in those areas. Then you have to pay attention to what you have on your property, Tracy. And like, these are trees. Amazing, right? These are a tree. This, by the way, this is a tree. <laughs> and what's amazing with the tree is that over time, this tree is going to put its leaves on. This is actually a commoner maple tree. And because it puts leaves on, even though we're out in the south, anything underneath this all of a sudden then becomes shaded. And sometimes even a shed like this, a shed like this over here can block that morning sun. But we do know that the west is over there. So this is going to be hot afternoon sun. And really, when it comes to full sun, it's six hours. So I often tell people to live in a space for a period of time to really see how much sun they get, that to get to know the space, and then write down the gardens that you have and what sun you have, and then that's going to guide your shopping decisions over here so that we're picking the right plant for the right place. Ooh, that's a good lesson. And you know what? If you're like me and you're always trying to chase the sun in your backyard, you will know exactly where the sun is at every time of the day, and therefore you will know which plants you can get. So what's going to thrive in sun? And as you say, sun is a full six hours of direct sunlight. Afternoon light. Yeah. So, you know, when we went and chose that tomato plant, that tomato plant is something that definitely ooh, needs a full sun. So this guy here is a full <laughs> sun lover. In the batch that we selected as well, this mandevilla, which is indeed... Ooh, it's not good for the plant, but hold on, you didn't see that, but that's okay. Uh, this mandevilla that's there, that's there is for full sun as well. As well, we do have this beautiful petunia that'll do great in full sun. And now this is where things get a little tricky at times too. We have two different varieties. I'm just gonna move these guys over here so I don't continue to make those mistakes. Those two varieties of different clematis that we have here, they're actually different in terms of the light requirements. This guy over here, which is a beautiful Vancouver uh, variety of uh, clematis, the name is Vancouver, that's a full sun variety that's there. So those are some selections that I have out of what I purchased at the garden center that are for full sun. Okay, so do you have, let's say we've discovered that your yard is not getting a lot of sun. And as a matter of fact, you need to start looking for plants that are shady, those shady plants. Do you have any recommendations uh, for plants that might work without a lot of light? Yeah, you know, just because you're feeling shady or you are shady doesn't mean that you can't have something beautiful that's out there. <laughs> Indeed, hostas are a great thing when it comes to being a, a shade plant, as well as this here. You may be shady, but you can always have a bleeding heart. This is Dicentra, bleeding hearts. Aww. This is actually a, a lighter leaf texture, which is quite nice because you get that contrast. With the clematis and or clematis, this is a species variety, which is an early spring blooming variety. And this one here will do well in part shade to shade. So that's another good one. Reminder, shade is not darkness. A lot of times people think, hey, I'm going to plant underneath a deck. Well, underneath the deck is full <laughs> darkness. And the only thing that grows in that is fungus, a fungi. 
you know. So you got to make sure that you do have still some light. You can also add, incorporate some color as well. This is Jack Frost. This is a beautiful shade variety plant as well with that variegated foliage that will do well. For annual plants, begonias and patients, they're always made in the shade. They'll make you smile in color as well and make you have some beautiful, beautiful uh, brightness in the darkest spaces as well. And then of course, this is a spring blooming perennial plant, which is Primula. And this Primula has a nice double flower, comes back each and every year. So it's the light requirements. And then if you want things to come back, there's something that's called an annual and a perennial. As a reminder, perennials come back year after year, but you gotta make sure they're hardy for your area for the winter. And then annuals are something that you need to replant. Okay, good lesson. Now, do you have an ultimate showstopper for your garden right now that you cannot wait to get into the ground? You're just waiting for the frost warning to go away? Yeah, so that, this is this guy right here. So probably something that's been making headlines right across the gardening industry is this variety here, which is called Bee's Knees. And the reason why it's making uh, everybody so excited is that bright yellow color. It's one of the yellowest yellows. It's self-cleaning, meaning that you don't really need to deadhead. It's also one that's going to do well in sunlight, heat tolerant. It's something that attracts pollinators. And that yellow color mixed with a little bit of blue is blue and yellow. And that's our support, of course, for Ukraine. So I'm going to plant a little bit of blue and yellow in my garden this year as well, just because uh, I want things to be colorful but peaceful as well. Oh, I love that. It's low maintenance, it's pretty, and it stands for a cause. It's like the plant everyone should be dating. Yes. Frankie, thank you so much.